Alright, welcome everybody to VW Flight Simulation. We're going to be doing a flight today from San Francisco International over to Denver. I got everything all uh, started on here. What up, Isabella? How are you? Hopefully, uh, am I coming in okay? Not too loud? Just right? Running this from my iPad. So I get set up here, position KSFO. Hey, we're in gate 62, I don't think it's going to take it. That's one thing I wish that the uh, Navigraph had was the gates loaded in there. We're going to Denver. I was just wondering if I'm, if, if I'm coming in too loud or is it just, just perfect? Uh oh, my stream shouldn't be. Let's say it isn't so. Company route. We got one loaded in there. Runway zero one right. Uh, flight numbers United seven twenty. Go ahead, activate. We're gonna go to departure. What's up, Ian? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, my friend. Um, the heck was I doing? Oh, the trucking. I got to load the trucking in. Uh, I forget what the flight plan said here. Let's, uh, you know what? Oh, okay. All is good now. Uh, what was it I was doing? Um, exclamation point. So I can put that, okay, track and two, so raw, that's what I thought it was. One way, one right. i kind of just go through it really quick, make sure we're good. That looks right. Uh, the arrival is Denver. It's the teller. Don't know what runway we'll get yet. We're getting it from Wolf. And we'll do that when we get a little bit closer. Okay, zero fuel weight, I kind of set that beforehand, I got 5,000 pounds of reserve, cost index of 50, 370 is our plan altitude, uh, the cruise windings, yeah I do, the new, oh not the uh, FS Dream Team, but I have Jeriskis or whatever, I kind of like his a little bit better, but I haven't picked up the FS Dream Team. Um, the heck was I looking for again? Damn, I keep on losing my chain of thought here. Oh, cruise wind. Top of climb winds. Top of climb winds are 257 at 49. I thought it came out. Maybe it didn't. I thought it, I thought it did. Shoot. What did I say it was? 257 at 49. CRS. Coming in strong. Can't remember shit. Alright, this is where it's a little warm in San Francisco today, 31 degrees. So let's see what our takeoff shows here. It wants us to do 32 on the temp. Takeoff are going to be for flaps 1. CG's in there. Let's see how close they are. So 148, they're three, they're three miles, three knots off of that one. The next one is 149, they're four off of that one. Last but not least, 155. It's a knot slower than what they calculated. Alright, but you know what it did? It didn't do the winds in there. For uh, which one, Drews, DD? I like it because you get three airports, and I've and I've been to all three. Because you you get um, you get O'Hara, you get Powaki, you get Midway. So you're getting you're getting three airports. You're not getting one. You're getting three. 
Uh, winds are calm, so we don't have to worry about that. 8.6 on arrival, what would, would our flight plan say here? A little bit more, I added, it said 18, was it 18.6? I put a thousand more on, so 19.5, so we're a thousand pounds more. Alright, auto throttle should go on. 155 is our takeoff speed. Yeah, yeah, you're getting three. So, yeah, it's, it's totally worth it. Totally, totally worth it. Alright. I gotta remember which one's my overhead here, which is gonna be nine. Uh, there's our PDC clearance that just came through. Fuel's coming on. Let's see, do I have a little bit? Yeah, 2,200 pounds in the center. That looks good there. Just coming down here. Coming down is on. Da, 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 da. Probe heat, not just yet. We can go ahead and turn our electronic high, our, our pumps on. 370. Let's get up the charts for you guys so you can take a look at them and follow along. Looks like FS Expo is wrapped up. It's already 5 o'clock back there, so it looks like it's done. Good news is that uh, FS Expo will be coming back to Vegas. And yes, I will be going to that again, once again. So I'm excited about that. Ah, oh, shit. There's a new update. Yeah, I'm going to be going. Last year it was in Vegas. I had a blast. I had a real, a real good time. It was fun. So, and, I, and back then I didn't know as many people either. I just started kind of streaming a little bit. I think back then I, I didn't even have like 50 people yet. So it'll be a little bit more exciting. I'm actually going to make up some t-shirts too. Oh, don't leave me Lady Flyer. Don't leave me Isabella. Come back. Don't break my heart. What the heck was I doing? Elevation, that's what I was looking for. Denver's elevation. Oh, you gotta reboot, okay. You got to do what you got to do. Airport information, elevation, that's what I want. 5434, so 5400. Yeah, so next year will be fun. I can't wait. We can go ahead and get rid of that. Yeah, that'd be cool, dude. What, what are we talking? We talked about what cotton or something like that for the landing. Smooth as cotton. Even if you can come up and say that, it would be cool. Uh, let's see. Sarah, four six three five in the squawk. We won't turn that on yet. We don't want to fry anybody yet. Oh, I bet. Yeah, it's been busy for everybody. And busy for me as well. My daughter graduated high school, so now we got two of them out of school. And we're trying to plan a trip to Hawaii here come September. So a lot going on. Okay, it looks good there. 33.95. We'll give them a call. Yeah. All right, let's get out of here. Oh, nice, dude! Congrats to congrats to you guys. Can I remember all these? There we go. I can't remember all these settings here. So, operate jetway, gonna undock, confirm it. I'm gonna go ahead and close the door. We're gonna request, to request pushback. No, 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 no. It, if it was high school, dude, I'd have to. We'd have to be talking right now because that would have been kind of weird. All 
I want the nose to the right, tail to the left. I'm going to go with the beacon on. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. That's awesome, man. C congrats to her. I was 30 to 40, so I mean, I think That was a 6,000 for 3840. Alright. While we're getting ready to push back here, I need to, uh... Lock in gear. Let me lock down my yoke real quick. I'm really excited about okay. the new yoke. That's coming out, too, from Honeycomb. I'm gonna jump on that and the throttle quadrant. Even if I have to make something to put those... ...on my desk. Release parking brakes. Okay, brakes are loose, clear to push. All engines clear. Start and will. Hey, what's up, Mike? Yes, sir. New scene, new, uh, livery. The first aircraft to get the, uh, new color scheme on it. Alright, yoke is tied down to the desks. Take these thongs off so I can control the rudder pedals better. Let's get in the flight deck here and get these engines started. Pack's coming off. Start the right. Right, 492, uh, one left, text the uh, uh, Bravo mic one, and uh, surface for the uh, Let's see what we got here. Okay, take off, trim was set to 4 point, that looks good right there. Not gonna argue with that. Yeah, it'd be cool if all you guys can come to Expo next year in Vegas, since it's going to be in Vegas. It's going to be a good time. I'm really excited, really excited for it. Like I said, I had a blast last year. So, I'm excited for this next coming up here for the Expo. Alright, we got started there. Um, All right, that's cool, Mike. You gotta uh, keep the kid happy, right? Yeah, life, uh, just around happy here. kid, happy life, just like the happy wife, happy life. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we're looking to go. The kids have never been to uh, Oahu, so of course we're gonna go to uh, Oahu. Disconnected. Bypass been removed. Context, yeah, you gotta go, Mike. It, it's fun. It really is fun. You know what I didn't do? Uh, put on the fuel, Dodo. There we go. Left is clear. Right is clear. Yeah, I've been to. Um, I haven't been to Maui. And I haven't been to the Big Island, but I've been to uh, Lahui and Honolulu. Yeah, we're, we're going to take my daughter for her graduation. Alright, here we go. Let's go set. Engine switches go to continuous. Let's go back to the overhead panel. Uh, yeah, we can turn off the APU. The bleeds come back on. Predo static can come on. We can go ahead and turn the generators on now. We're going to go ahead and drop off the APU. Generator 1. Yeah, all that is set. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and turn our taxi light on. Let's give uh, approach control a call here. Uh, did he give me an initial altitude? Climb via the SID. Uh, climb via said it was 19,000, but we're going to stick with five. And our Cal Approach United at 720, we've got the Edison request taxi, the runway one right. Edison 20, 
Alpha, Alpha 1. Yeah, the uh, North Shore of the island is awesome. They actually made a movie long, long, long time, long time ago called North Shore. And uh, last time I was in Hawaii, I was 20 years old. So it's almost been 50 years. Since, 50 years, 30 years since I've been. Okay, yeah, Alpha, and we'll follow the uh, company A320 for United uh, 720. Let's go ahead and start the timer on this side. That was 34 airports, 11 o'clock, uh, one five miles south for the airport of the Dunbar and Bridge side. Okay, right, there goes United A320. Okay, right, there goes Yeah, Maui's really nice. I haven't been there yet, but I heard it's really nice. But, you know, for the kids, their first time, we should probably go to Oahu so they can see it. Oh yeah, I bet. That sounds pretty estimated out of the state there. Uh, we're one right, that's the uh, Alpha Alpha 1 right on Yeah, no problem. Alpha Alpha 1, United uh, 720. Let's, Let's see. see. It looks like it's Aaron working it. Good land. Yeah, we were thinking about taking a cruise but in down to Mexico, but we're kind of running out of time here. So, um, you know, to get our passports and everything. So we're just going to do the the U.S. thing and just fly over to Hawaii. We even looked at going to, like, Orlando Universal Studios, and it's the same price. It's about 3800 bucks for four of us. And it's not bad because it includes airfare, hotel, and transfers. So it's really, it's really not bad at all for four people. We're going through Costco, their travel agency. So, and we get like, uh, we get a lunch, lunch, breakfast, or dinner special at Wolfgang Pucks. We choose one of those every day that we're there. So it's not bad, and I think we get like a hundred dollars a Costco gift card or something like that. Mm, sorry, I don't get it. Uh, this is all yet means. Uh, so just uh, request a vaccine for departure for a zero flight. Hotel for the and we'll below 2,000 so further advised. And, uh, 5306. 5306. And, uh, not about 2,000 feet. Oh, you get to use your, use your miles. I do have miles on American, but, um, Unfortunately, we'd have to fly down to LA. We're actually going to fly out of Oakland because it's a lot cheaper than Sacramento. It's like a thousand dollar difference. So we'll go on Hawaiian's A321. So I'll do the hour and 45 minute drive down to Oakland. We've done that before anyways. It's just cheaper to go out of Oakland than Sacramento. This guy going to one left, hopefully. Yep. You only fly American? Yeah, I like American Airlines too. That's actually one of my favorite airlines. Them and United. And then Southwest. I've only been on Delta once. I think this is going to push up 446 for radio check. 446 North Carolina departure. Uh, Crescent Condor 5. 
I don't have 446 with Charlie King, I have RG Los Angeles. Ain't nothing wrong with the upgrades, my friend. Just went for custom bonus from us. Nothing wrong with that at all. So, who has 34, 3840 is clear of the active. Let's well, exactly do Charlie 42. That's great to play Roger. I should wrap the uh, alpha again. Thank you, that'll be alpha. Four ninety two RNF six forty one left every day clock. Yeah, this is one twenty RNF tight I run one right clear for takeoff. RNF to tight I one way one right clear for takeoff, you know it's seven twenty. He should he should let me know that the traffic's gonna turn out. I already know he's gonna turn out, but I usually tell him. Lights are on, we're ready to rock. Yeah, you know what? I've, I've, I've got miles with um, Capital One. What, I almost got like 40,000 miles with them. So I can use that for an airplane ticket as well. Alright, you guys ready? Let's do this. One out of two radar contacts, they have to be detached. One out of two radar contacts, they have to be detached. One out of two radar contacts, they have to be detached. 80 knots cross-checked and throttle hold. Cabin is secure, sir. They're coming up on our V1 speed. There it is. Rotation. The positive rate gear is coming up. And our Cal United 720 is airborne, we're at 700. Start our right turn. Level one up to flight level 190, United 720. Flaps coming up. Gear is up and off. United 720, you're going to direct here. Go direct to uh, United 720, thank you. So I got direct to uh, Come over to the left a little bit here. It's pretty much straight ahead. On that VNAV, let's bring up the. I'm going to run it from my iPad here. You guys will be able to see what I'm doing. We're going to direct Sora. That'll take us to the second page. Oops, I went too far there. Previous page, previous page, way too far. Sora. There's our turn to Sora. Climbing up to 190 Israel, that's the top of his altitude. All right, we can go ahead and turn off our taxi. The taxi the lights can come off. Retractables can come off. Watch the fuel here, 600 pounds. We'll turn it off around 200. I 
head back in here. I gotta watch the fuel real quick. We're out of fuel. Things are off line there, sir. Sorry, big things are off. Use your fuel. Come on, sir. We can switch over to weather radar now. We're above any train that we're gonna, we would be hitting. Are you guys able to hear ATC okay? And am I coming in okay? If I'm too, if I'm too loud or anything, let me know. Okay, we're at 280. I'll do one to ready. Right. Oh, I'll come. 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 i it should be on. Alright, well, outside view. Got it, 720, switching over to advisory. See you, thanks for ATC, goodbye. I like the new paint job on this thing, man. It looks really good, I think. I can't wait to see what they look like on the 777. And the uh, 787. I got the one for the 787. But just to see him on the 777, I think it's going to look good. Okay, final altitude is 370. We'll go ahead and set that. Oh, the brakes come off. For departure, eBay transition. The Alpha Victor Echo VR. Going to 86 arrival in LA. Finally, the thing out of our dreams is this frequency, block 4645. It's Denver. Let's make sure that we're using the airline yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yep, we are. And that's block 4645. Show you guys where we are here on the chart. There we are climbing out of the Bay Area. Get our plane in there so you can see see where we're headed and what our flight plan route is here on the Navigraph charts. It's always good to have up there so we can see. One right. Uh, Checking, so they already did that. No approach yet, we're on the Wolf Taylor 2. We'll pick the approach as we get a little bit closer. So that's where we are, and where we're headed. We're just out of 16, once we hit 18,000 feet here in the States, we'll go to 2992. Are you familiar with the highway 101? We're going to Unicom frequency since you switched just over. Altitude is uh, going to be at the 2,000 feet turn. The guy who did this livery did a really good job on it. I like it. Everything's correct. Style call. Just everything about it looks really well done. Okay, 18,000 feet, you know what that means, we got a standard. Let's just check the overhead panel here, I don't know why that keeps on going out. It's weird. 
They should all stay on. Alright, they all look good. Actually, I like this, this one to show position. Thanks for coming back. I know you got to go to bed soon, but thanks for popping in and greatly appreciate it as always. And hopefully when you get back on back later uh, tomorrow, you can see the landing in the Denver. going to suck here the next couple of days. Today it's 90, going to be 96. Tomorrow 102. Uh, I think it's Tuesday 103. Yeah, it's not going to be fun. I'm not looking forward to the heat. Not one bit. Gotcha. Disco. Oh, Discovery Bay. Been there. We used to have family lived in Discovery Bay. Got a 22. I like these. I like these views. Look at the haze, you can see the haze just like it is outside. Yeah, Discovery Bay, it gets hot there too. Let me see what um it's it's ninety-four outside right now, it's supposed to be ninety-six. I'm trying to see what the next couple of days are gonna bring us. Oh it looked yesterday. So 97 today, 102 tomorrow, 102 on Tuesday, and then it cools down on Wednesday, 97. And then 98 on Thursday, Friday's 92, Saturday's 91, and then 93, so we're back in the 90s again. Oh good, Brutus is back. Did you, did you say how everything went? On the triple seven dash three? Nice. See that right there, I like that. That's a great view right there. Bet, yeah, different from what he's used to flying a 380. 
Alright, enough of the outside views. Let's get back in the inside here. Okay, out of 26 for 37. Luckily, we're not painting any storms in front of us. So this aircraft, this 37267, so I did a research on the uh, internet and tried to match everything up uh, to the cockpit as the real airplane. So they've got the, I think this is the old Collins uh, MCP panel. Uh, they got the uh, analog gauges just like in the real plane. Uh, the way the fuel is set up matches exactly what they have. Uh, everything else is exactly the way it is in the real airplane. Because I like to try to copy and match everything up as what United would have. So let's go back to my iPad here. This should be in progress dash. Oops. Oh, I disconnected myself. Let's go back. Progress. There we go. And then uh, we're still in climb, so we should still be in um, active e not econ climb. Good old GoPro view there. Yeah, it's really nice out for being a hot day. I'm surprised there's no thunderstorms. That's what I do too. Gotta make it real. That's why I try to fly like the real times and stuff like that. And as you guys probably heard, there's gonna be a new flight simulator released by Microsoft for Xbox and PC. I guess come next year. They showed a preview of it at E3. It actually looks freaking amazing. So now that's going to give um, PM, uh, PMDG, P3D some competition. Microsoft's back in the game again. So they're probably seeing how much money that they're losing out. So now it'll be, inter it'll be interesting to see if any of the aircraft that we have now will be able to be put into the new sim. Uh, I can, let me show you guys a preview. I don't know if you guys saw it, but they announced it at E3 just, uh, I guess, a couple hours ago. Um, E3 2019 news. Here it is right there. Yeah, me too. Uh, everybody else that hadn't seen it yet, I just want to show it to them real quick. So it'll be it'll be awesome to see how they're going to compete with P3D. Did they actually go in there and fix the sim with all the problems that it had before? I mean, the cities and everything, uh, Dubai, 
actually look really good. The weather. Yeah, I think this, you know how Microsoft had all their default aircraft when they first came out with the sim and then people started developing for them? It's going to be interesting. I'm not going to knock it. I mean, they're the original makers of flight sims, so I'm not going to knock it. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have what we had today. So it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. I don't know how the hell you're going to do it on freaking Xbox. Yeah, Dovetail, that didn't last very long. They just didn't have enough people interested, but... It looks like the Aces team is back. Play it with Xbox Game Pass. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. We will see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to wait till when it comes out and then look at all the reviews and just like we, what we had to do with P3D, we had to wait to see if that was light before anybody said, oh, you know, I'm not going to buy that either, but I'll wait to see what the reviews say and then go from there. I'm not going to jump ship because now that that's coming out, you know P3D is going to step up their game because they're not going to be pushed out of the flight sim community. So they're going to come back with something else on their on their own and compete with it. Mm -mm -mm. Now we're coming up to the Sierras here. There's Sierra Nevada. Let's kind of scroll out here to see. So we're just uh, almost at Mina. You got Mammoth Lakes right here. This is Minden back here, Nevada. And above Minden would be Reno and then Tahoe's over here. No, I didn't get to hear what they said. I'll have to go back and watch. Was it on uh, FS Elite? Because I didn't get to hear any of it. I really didn't watch any of the interviews that they had. So I need to go back and wait for them to publish it and put it on there so I can see it. I haven't got to see it yet. Yeah, there's our thousand foot warning. Okay, I'll take a look at it. I'll watch the video. The only one, the only interview I kind of really watched and got to see was the uh, Chili Willie's panel. With everybody up there, I didn't really see anything else. I'll go to FS Elite on my other computer here and see.
videos. They don't even have any videos on here. At FS Elite for the Expos. Let me go to um, YouTube. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah, I'll have to wait. Okay, I don't see anybody that's posted that on anywhere yet. They probably got to go through it and do what they want to do to it before they put it online. But even on FS Elite's website now, you see Microsoft announces brand new flight simulator E3. It's on their Twitch. Okay, I'll check it out. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate that, my friend. You the man? I gotta check my email really quick here. Confirmation. see the videos in here. Cool. We'll have to wait to see when the when they upload uh, from P3D. I think, if I remember right, I think uh, not P3D did their own presentation. Press master, pause con, honeycomb, navigraph. Yeah. I thought that would follow them already. I'm gonna have to go in here and hit the follow button. Quality wings, that's the one I missed too. I wanna watch that one.
looks like. What's Matt Davies doing? No, he's offline now. Just want to see who's all flying online. Everybody gets back from uh, the expo, though. They're going to be uh, all kinds of people flying. That's for sure. I'm going to wait on the honeycomb, though, because the yoke, I am going to get it. It looks like a really good product. And I like that they have the throttle cotter and stuff. But uh, when they release the yoke, they won't have the throttle cotter yet because that won't be released until December or January. So I'm going to wait till it comes out and just buy it as a bundle. Alright, FMS is showing uh, 522 miles on top of descent. Oh, you know what? I got a text message from my crew. Let me see what they said. Oops. Okay, it just departed Calgary. I told him 17.30, so it perfectly works out. I told customs 17.30. That's a good dog, huh? Okay, now I'm getting hungry for uh, lunch. It's a little late, like four or something, but I gotta eat something. Can't believe how fast this weekend went by. Weekend flew by. A weekend flew by fast. Let's see what heading we're looking at. To Milford is a 079. Outside view again? Sure, why not? Ian, you still around? Ah, uh, 
So we gotta come up with, um, try to get some emotes. I like the, the the one for like a, a really a nice landing. Soft as cotton. A lot, a lot of everybody has like butter and what whatnot. Soft as cotton. If somehow we can make a fluffy, um, I don't know, just something that looks like a piece of cotton, that would even work. Well, I gotta figure some other stuff out. I am gonna have some t-shirts made though for uh, next year's uh, FS Expo. I'm actually gonna have one made before I go so I can wear it and, and take a look at it. I'll put it up on the site for you guys once we get it. It'll, it'll have on the back of it, it'll say uh, BW Flight Simulation on the back of the shirt and in the front it's going to say do you even flight sim bro so that's what's my uh, that's what my shirts are going to say I can either have a do you even flight sim or do you even flight sim bro I'm probably going to go with I'm going to go with do you even flight sim I'm gonna like that one better. We're 608 miles from Denver. Seattle Center is up online. Go back into the cockpit here. I'm gonna go grab a snack, guys. I'm gonna be right back. Getting hungry.
Alright, I'm back. I'm here. I'm just eating. I'm muted, but I'm here.
of the night, Isabella. Thanks for stopping by. I just got off the phone, guys. Thanks for uh, stopping by. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good day uh, flying tomorrow. Take care. All right. Bring this back up. About 288 top of descent. Not night. So I'm hoping there would be Denver Center online. It might be as we get a little bit closer. We'll see. Or even approach. That would be good. But I'm not going to hold my breath. Now let's see what runway Denver is landing. Where's my active sky? Throw me our destination. Denver's active runway is 34 right, 34 left, 35 right, 35 left. Peace! So let's see what we're going to do here. I don't need my flight plan up anymore. Yes. Uh, Navigraph charts. Denver. Let's pull up the charts. Let's take a look at the airport, airport overview. So 3-4 left. 3-4 right. 3-5 left. And 3-5 right. So it all depends on where our gate is. So I go over here to my other computer. I type in United 720 and go to Flight Aware. They're going to be at Bravo 29. So we'll look up the parking gates here. The icing, we don't want icing gates and coordinates. We want B terminal. Bravo 29. Bravo 29 is here. Six whiskey, five whiskey. So let's see where that's at. back to the gates here. I'm trying to find out where this gate is exactly. So taxi lines. Those are spots. So this looks like it's B terminal here. So why don't we land on runway 35 left? We're going to go 3-5 left. So let's go to approach. We already got the star in here. As you can see there. And we're going to do ILS 3-5 left. And let's see where we want to pick it up at. Let's go to approaches. 2-5, 3-5 left. We're going to come off. Gonna come off teller. That should be an option. And it is. Let's come back. Let the altitudes load. Altitudes have loaded in there. Let me take a look here. Alright, looks good to me. Looks like we are set. 140, we're going to go flaps, we don't need to go full flaps, we'll do flaps 30, 152, as of right now will be our approach speed. Chasm uh, 1234, yeah I did see it, it looks really nice. It'll be interesting to see uh, how they compete with PMDG, not PMDG, P3D. So I'm not going to like rush out and buy it right away. I'll let everybody else do it and then find out, you know, 
what they think about it, and then kind of play it, you know, play it by ear from from there. Uh, because I know that P3D is not going to sit back and let Microsoft come back into the game. Black Diamond Chaz, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to stream. I'm doing pretty good. Can't complain. Just doing a little short flight here from San Francisco to Denver. Flight Sim Expo has uh, has closed down until next year, which will be in Vegas. Can't wait for that. Yours truly will be there for that one, of course. Uh, let's go back into here really quick here. So uh, 108.5353 is a runway. Final approach course heading. We'll put that in here twice. Just kind of pre-planning everything before we get there. And 108.5. We'll set that twice. So that is set up in there and ready to go. Let's just double check that one more time. I want to make sure that it is right. 108.5353. Set once, twice over here, and then twice down the pedal stool. 147 is now. It'll probably drop down a knot. It usually does. So will 151 be our final approach speed? Uh, let's go back to the charts. So this is what we're looking at for our arrival runway. One way three five left will be the closest runway to our gate. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of any kind of Boeing, to be honest with you. I know they're having their troubles right now, but I will get on a Boeing aircraft any day. Any day. I will get on any Boeing aircraft. I don't, I don't have a problem with Boeing. Uh, let's see here. The teller arrival, which is right here. This is what we're doing. Let's overlay this on the chart. That way we can see it, 70%. So we've added a runway here, a 3-5 left, so we can do that. 3-5 uh, left, teller, boom. Load it. And there you go. So now we have our entire route all the way to the airport, and they have the map. Here we are right here on the map. We're just getting ready to enter Denver's airspace right now. We're in Salt Lake. We're getting ready to enter Denver. No ATC on as of yet, which is fine. I can live through it, I guess. And this is our f our approach into runway 35 left into Denver. So we are moving right along on Navigraph charts. And bring up the FMS. Go to progress, 218 miles top of descent, we're 347 miles from the airport. We're going to go f speed brakes to 2. Now let's go check out the outside view, shall we?
Alright. Let's bring back the FMS so you guys can see the progress. So far it's been a pretty smooth ride. Uh, nothing to really speak of. Maybe a little light, light chop here and there. But other than that, it's been a really great fight. No thunderstorms to think, uh, speak of, which is always really nice. Makes your flights a lot easier. And we're just about five miles from Hanksville VOR. And then from there we'll start the uh, arrival at Wolf. So everything is going uh, pretty doggone good, I have to say. Let's pull up charts again, take a look at it, see where we're at. You can see that we're coming over Hanksville right now. Hotel Victor Echo. Next one's Wolf. And that pretty much starts our star into Denver International. I've never been to the new airport. I have been to the old airport, which was Stapleton, back when I was a kid. I remember that airport. The airport was big, too. And this one's bigger. But Stapleton was a big airport as well. Now there's nothing but homes on there now. So if Denver Center was on, we would be contacting him here pretty quick. Right at Pixie. We would have been giving them a call. And unfortunately, nobody's on. Ever since the flight uh, sim expo, I think everybody's been tied up with that. Now that it's over with, everything will kind of get back to normal. So we've got about 181 miles to the top of Decent. We're going to be uh, arriving there around 23.50, so about 40 minutes from now. should be a uh, easy and fun approach into Denver, Colorado. Hope uh, hope you guys are having a great weekend. It's the uh, end of the weekend, unfortunately. It went by super quick, as it usually always does. Saturday flies by, and then Sunday comes, and it's flying by, and next thing you know, we're back to Monday. Back to Monday. And everybody will have a case of the Mondays. I know I do. You know what we're going to do? We're going to plug in some live ATC here while we're flying. I'm going to plug it into uh, Denver. Let's listen to see what's going on in Denver. Since we don't have any online ATC. Departure, center, we don't want center. Let's just go to approach. Listen to approach while we're flying here. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. It's up uh, pretty loud. I can turn down the engine sounds a little bit. Uh, 
Let's see, let's turn down the cockpit a little bit here. Let's go like 60. What we'll do here is try to turn down the engines for a little while too. So we can listen to ATC. Yeah, at least it's something to listen to, you know? While you're flying. It sounds like it sounds like it landed south. Yep, they're landing south. How is that going to affect me? I want to try to copy the real world as much as possible. I think I'm just going to keep it because the winds are zero zero. The winds are three six zero at three. I think I'm just going to keep what I got. And approach uh, United uh, 720 level 13,000. That's my real flight right there, United 720. That's who I'm following. I could do I could do one seven left. How would that look if I did one seven left? Kaylee Kipper, what are the other choices? Tashner and Wahoo.
Oh, there's Wahoo. Let's try this. Let's see what, let's see what that looks like. They're coming in from the seventh. All right, now you guys are getting me confused here. Let's see. Ah. Actually, that might work. That might work a lot better. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. For United, 2010, All right. I like that a lot better. I'm going to go with the iOS 7 from Sarah. Okay. Alright, let's uh, erase that. Let's go 7. Let's see how that comes up and looks like. Sarah. So let's bring it up on the uh, the overhead here. Let's take a look at it. Let's just make sure... So just kind of going through it here, Sarah trailer. Step through it. I like it. All right, we're going to do that. That's going to change things. Still 147. So that's triple 1.5082 on the heading. So. 082 Oh, too much So we're 88 miles from top of descent. Let's pull up Denver Tower now. Listen to the tower.
Guys, 52-20, yeah, I believe that was uh, due to a tail strike earlier in the day, so that's what I think that's what it is. Alright, 66 miles top of descent. United 724, joint Foxtrot, kind of ground. Foxtrot, what the ground goes, 24. United 720 left turn at Bravo 4, continue your touchdown Bravo 4, kind of ground. Okay, that's where my, that's the flight that I'm following. Bravo 4. Bravo 4. Let's see where he did. So Bravo 4, he came off on Bravo 4, I was just falling it over. And he's probably going in golf. Alright, 38 miles to the top of descent. We're gonna get ready to start our descent here in just a bit. Uh, the lowest altitude on the arrival is 7,000 feet. We'll go ahead and set that in there now. So we don't have to worry about it doing it later. The plane will descend on its, on its own and we'll get to this altitude. We'll stop at that altitude. Kind of look at the uh, Denver uh, Denver area here as we're coming into it. Look at the GoPro. It's a GoPro view there. Looking very pretty. I'm going to go ahead and turn the engine sounds back on. There's our top of decent. We've got a tailwind coming in 251 at 78. Take another look here at the charts. We're going to overlay the approach chart for runway 7. 70%. 
and you can see what we're going to do. So basically, we're coming in like this, and we're going to come out here, and then we're going to go straight up back to the northwest, and then in coming east. This is what it's going to look like. Atlantic will be right back, guys. Challenger 377 Delta Pop, Denver Tower, Cochrane Children Spawn and Airbus, one mile final, with 200 up four, runway 7 to the land. Runway 7 to the land, Delta Pop. Alright, I just had to call Atlantic Aviation in San Jose and let them know that my plane's coming in there. Uh, so as you see, we've started our top of descent now and for the arrival into Denver. snow to be seen. doing on the arrival here. So we, here we are here. We can bring up the uh, arrival. No, oh, wrong one, that one. Teller 2. 70% here. You can see we're exactly on the arrival. And as we get to Teller, it's going to be a left turn heading to the northwest. We'll cross Teller at uh, 11,210 knots. So the plane should fly ex itself exactly the way it's published on the star. I knew that was going to change by a knot, so final approach speed's 151. I'll bring it up on my iPad here. Seven 
Let's go. A hundred out. Let's go fifty out. Let's go twenty five out. That was twenty five. Let's go fifteen. Let's go ten. And then five miles out, we should be fully, fully established. And you can see the range rings coming in right now. We just passed the 100, which is back here. So this is the 50, 50 nautical mile ring. As I zoom in out, you can see all the rings within there. So this kind of gives me an idea, the radius from the airport. Just a little bit of extra something, something. <laughs> Alright, let's get back in the cockpit and just kind of watch these altitudes that we restricted. So, above 17, below 19. This one's above 17, so that's, we're going to be just fine with that. This is our 50, mile, 50 nautical mile ring, and our 25 from the airport. And it goes 15, 10, and 5. We're going to have a D cell coming up here pretty quick. There's our first D cell there. I'm going to help it out. And since the elevation here in Denver is pretty dug on high, we're going to go ahead and throw our lights on now. Engine ignition switches can go to continuous. We'll start our AP as we get down a little further. Thank you. 
Denver altimeter is uh, one zero three zero four five. Holy crap, that's high. Three zero four five. Three zero four five. And we can set that now because we're below eighteen. We hit that. Boom. And here comes that turn, and you know what? That looks like a wicked turn. We're not going to do that. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is, I'm after here, I'm just going to go direct the Sarah, because it just doesn't make any sense to do that turn like that. So we're just going to go from here to here and above 10,000. So let's go ahead and set 10,000 in here. Call it 10,500. <laughs> That's our next D cell that we're showing here. We're going to take over the, uh, we're going to help it out here a little bit. Let's see what our next D-cell is, uh, 151, 160, 180. I'll go ahead and start bringing it down now. We'll bring it down to 230. Flaps to one. That will help us slow us down too. You see the auto throttle is having a hard time trying to keep the speed because of the turbulence. time I've been here with the new scenery, we'll see how it works. I probably should have loaded it before I flew in here just to make sure that it works, but I said, oh, what the hell. We'll just go by the seat of our pants. All right, it's supposed to be back down at 210. We still have our speed brakes out. Out 
No flaps too. That was 453, follow stop left from your right in Charlie November. Then about downtown Denver is starting to pop in. You guys remember this airport is out in the middle of nowhere. There's our thousand foot warning. Let's see if I can see the airport. It's gonna be out here. There's 210. Go ahead and start bringing the speed back to 180 now. 190. We'll do 190. And once we get lined up with the ILS, we're going to take over the plane ourselves. And do some uh, manual flying here. I had it wrong. I had it wrong. I'm glad I looked. Just wondering why it wasn't coming up. There it is. I'm glad I looked. Flaps up. We'll go ahead and arm in the speed brakes up and arm it. We'll go flaps to five. Should be capturing the localizer here pretty quick. There's the there's Denver. I've got it in sight. <coughs> Okay, we're waiting for the intercept. There's the intercept. Go down to 7,000 feet now. One eighty on the speed. Flaps of ten. Gears coming down. Landing lights are coming on. APU can be started. My controls. Speed 160. Flaps 15. We gotta watch that speed. Throw the speed brakes out. A little high, but that's fine. We should be able to make that point at 7,000, which looks like we're going to. Bring the trim up. There's our 7,000 foot call. Now we're coming up on glide slope. We can bleed the speed back. I'm going to go ahead and control the speed myself. Let's put 
put in here a runway heading just in case we gotta go and let's go to 10,000 on the miss just in case go below the glide let's get back up on it two red, two white, look good flaps 25 151 is our final approach speed. We'll lock it in there so I know. Go ahead and arm the speed brakes. One thing I'm learning to do is not to rely on an autopilot as much. I used to have the... the uh, a bad habit of always relying on the autopilot, but what makes you a good pilot too is kind of hand flying this thing, getting to learn the airplane, learning how to control it, and trying to hit those right on landings. Go ahead and find those flaps of 30. So, red over red, the saying is you're dead, but I'm okay. Speed's looking really well there, kind of gives a little bit more power. Waiting for another white to come in. A little bit more power here, a little throttle in here, so it don't fall out of the sky. We don't want to fall out of the sky. At least we got one white. There's the other one. Now we can let the plane come down nice and slow. Yeah, it's better to do some more hand flying, get used to the aircraft, get used to the feel of the controls. Makes you a better pilot overall. Alright, let's just bring this thing down. There it is. Two eighty six. Gotta work on it. It's not bad though. Just got to work on it. I'll take the 286, that's fine. For an aircraft that I don't fly that much, I'll take it. I just need to get better. Manual braking, my airplane. Thanks, Chaz, appreciate that. Got to work on it a little bit more, though. I want to get down around the 100s. Just a little bit smoother. I think when I came down, I came in a little fast at the end there. That's what probably gave me the 286, but overall, man, I didn't hit 300, so I'm happy with that. I'll get used to it. I'll get it. I'm not worried about it. I'm happy with it. Alright, let's go ahead and get the flaps up. I got those coming up now. Let's go over here and get the lights that we no longer need on. Uh, for my taxi can come off. This can come on. Look, give it a little gas here. AP bleed can come off. Pedostatics can come off. We'll go over to ground. Power, standby power. Oh yeah, I'll get better at it. I just gotta fly it more. The more hand flying you do, the better you're gonna get too. The less mistakes you'll make. The only time I would use the autopilot is if you have zero visibility and you're flying into an airport that you're flying the minimums and you need to use the autopilot for the auto land. That's the only time I would use it. But even if you're able to break out of it, take it over by hand. So even though that was a pretty, you know, pretty tough landing, 286, I guess it's not tough. A lot of people say it's a good landing. Uh, I'll take it. I'm not going to complain. So this is the updated scenery from Flight Bean for Denver. They put it into their HD status. And you can tell by the kind of puddles that they have here on the taxiways and the runways as you come in and land. And looking at the terminals. Um, 
speaking of that, while we're taxiing, I'm going to bring the charts here on my other computer so I can see what I'm doing. on that center line. Alright, I see where I'm at here. Yep, just gotta keep it up. Keep on doing that manual flying and getting used to it, getting used to the controls, what the controls are doing. And, uh, yeah, we'll get better at it. I just need to fly, you know, I've been flying the biz jets a lot, I just need to fly these planes better. Yeah, it looks really nice. Wait till we turn into the terminals here, coming up. It looks really good. I haven't flown here since the new one. So it looks like I need to turn, not this one. Still got a ways to taxi here. Uh, I think it's this next one coming up here. Let's. This next one right here. This is the terminal I'm going to. I'm going the back side of this terminal. So let's go out. Let's go to the outside view here. And this next this next one right here, I'll take a right. One thing I did forget to turn off, that goes steady. Yeah, it's it's a it's a big ass airport. 286 Ian is what I got on the landing. It was a 286. Just like I was telling Black Diamond here, it's just going to take you know practice for me to get better at the landing since I don't fly the bigger airliners that much. I'm going to start kind of moving between the business jets and the airliners a little bit more because it seems like the airliners right now are the most popular thing in flight sim. So I want to give the viewers what they want to see. And I know a lot of viewers like flying the airliners. So I'm going to kind of do my best to move between the both of them. Yeah, this is a huge airport. It's no joke. Okay, guys, what we're looking for is 29. So that's 17. What do we got there? 21A and B. 23. 25. 27. 29. Let's see if I can figure out the nose view. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. Where is the nose view? Straight up here. Let's see if I find the nose view real quick. There we go. Come on, turn. There we go. A320, a little bit more, come on, a little bit more. Just a touch more. Boom. All right. Back into the cockpit we go. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Parking brake is set. We can go ahead and go, let's go to the overhead panel. Let's go ahead and put on the power for the engines here. Back down here, shut down the engines. Yeah, 
Let's uh, go ahead and operate the jetway. United Airlines, of course. Yes. Yes. Let's go to the outside view. Let's watch the... Uh, well, actually, let's turn off the beacon light now. Taxi light can come off. Okay, while we're doing that, with the ATC in the back, just brings it to more realistic. Yeah, I just wish we would have had Vatstam on board, but that's fine. You know, people are probably doing their own thing today. So that's that's all good. All right, let's go ahead and get the doors open. Let's go ahead and tell these guys we want to offload everything now. Request the deboarding. Zoom out a little bit here so we can see it a little bit better. Kind of do like an up view here, shall we? Okay, they want to open up the back stairs. That's fine. We'll give them that. We'll let them deplane or clean from the back. So we'll open that door. Let them do their thing. And let's uh, while we're here, let's take a um, let's take an overview of the airport, shall we? I'll just kind of go up here high so we can take a look at it. This will be it for me tonight, but uh, we're going to need to fly this plane out of here and go somewhere else. So we'll maybe uh, figure that out tomorrow, what we're going to do. But uh, there's another there's another United plane in the old Continental, old colors. He's sitting there on the other side. Well, this is kind of the overview of the airport. It's a huge airport. It's got, um, how many taxiways? I mean, how many runways does this place have? It's got a lot. They're going to be making another one, too. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six runways, and I think they're making two more. So, yeah, it, it's a freaking huge airport. It's no joke. But, I mean, Flight Beam, of course, outdoes themselves all the time when they make scenery. So, I mean, it's really good scenery. Everything is just done really, really nice. I like the puddles. I kept the puddles in there. Why not? You know, during the summertime or whatnot, that's what you're going to get here anyways because of the thunderstorms. And then when the snow melts, well, you got the United Maintenance hangars here. Just the whole overview of the airport is just amazing. And then here you want to, what we can do here is while this is loading, let's kind of back it up a little bit here. Let's see what the lighting looks like. Let's check out the lighting. So we'll go ahead and bring in the uh, taskbar here. Let's go to world time preview. Let's check out and see what the lighting looks like. Oh yeah, look. Look at that. That's like dusk, and we go like total night. Look at that. Now uh, there's that United that's pushing. Yeah, it looks good. Looks really good. I like how you can you get the light effect and it's kind of like foggy or whatnot. It's from the lights. It looks really good. Let's just make it. I guess they want the moon. It was totally dark with no moon. Let's kind of bring it in the dusk. Even dusk, it still looks good. It could be me. I can, let me, um, I've turned down my headset. I think it's, let me know if this is any better for you guys. Maybe I'm talking too loud. My wife tells me I talk too loud all the time. So yeah, it looks really good. The lighting and everything looks really, really good. No, I've only got, I've only got one mic. Yeah, let me turn off the ATC. So I mean, I've got everything pretty much turned down as low. Let's see. Let's let me know if that's any better.
maybe that's a little bit better for you guys. I've, I've, I've turned it down quite a bit, and I've got the mic away from my, uh, it's away from my, my mouth. So hopefully that, that's a little bit better for you guys. That's what I'm hoping. Well, let's see who else is streaming here that we can, uh, maybe raid somebody. Let's see, the gong guy's on here. He's, uh, just doing a recap. You've got Jeff who's flying. So let's, um... I'm wearing a different hud uh, headset. The last headset that I was wearing was a uh, Sennheiser aviation headset, and this is a Telex 750. So maybe maybe the uh, the other headset was uh, a little bit better quality than the Telex 750. It's just the Telex 750 is not as doesn't get as hot and sweaty as the other one does because it's got uh, insulated head uh, earphones. So maybe that's what you were he hearing. I just needed a break because it, my ears were just getting sweaty using those. So I wanted to go back to the Telex 750. So, yeah, this, these just probably sound a little bit different. The, the uh, Sennheiser probably sounds a lot better because it's a better quality headset than the 750. So that's, that's the difference you're probably hearing. Is, is the, does it still sound too loud or is it okay? Thanks for uh, joining me here. We're going to uh, raid uh, Pilot's KCX Jeff over there now. He's flying his on his way in his Condor 8320. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Everybody take care. T peace out. And have a good night. Thanks for the follows, too.